The Spear Farben Color Pencils. I'm fairly certain I pronounced it right this time. That's kind of a <laughs> kind of a weird name, but here it is on the tin. We've got a matte coated tin. I purchased these on Amazon and I think I paid, it was on Amazon Prime Day and I think I paid around $35 for this set. Um, generally it's about $46 for this set of 96 pencils and they also offer it in a set of uh, 72 for I think roughly $35. So, um, so I got the bigger set for the price of the smaller one, basically. Um, I've been interested in these in a couple, for a couple of years. I've heard really great things about them, and I've had a lot of viewer requests to review this product. So when I saw the sale, I decided to purchase a set so that I could bring them to you here in a review. So this is what they look like. They are in trays of 24, and you have four trays of 24. Now I have sharpened all of these. I didn't have any breakage, and the build quality felt pretty good. Now these might look kind of familiar if you've watched some of my other reviews, and we'll talk about that in a minute because I do find them to be almost identical to another set of pencils that I have. Luckily, they're a set of pencils that I like, so I don't feel too badly about them. But uh, what I've heard these called over and over again is probably the closest thing you can find to a polychromos. So as we uh, as we go through this review, um, you'll find out what I think, and you can decide for yourself whether you think they would be a good substitute for polychromos or not. Showing you, I did put these in rainbow order because I, I can't remember how they were in because I always mix them up when I'm uh, using them, and then I just kind of went through and put them in a, uh, a fairly chromatic order. They are pretty easy to remove from the trays. Sometimes the little uh, pinchy parts that you lift the trays out are difficult to grasp, but these are pretty good because they're a little deeper, I think, than some other trays, which is nice. Um, so yeah, no issues there. So let's look at the swatches here so you can get a look of the color range. Now, I accidentally swatched one color twice and I have no idea which one it is. <laughs> But um, because like I realized, I'm like, wait a minute, I have 96 cubes. How come? How come I'm I'm a, I'm a cube short? So um, I somehow managed to swatch a color twice. And ironically, apparently, I'm not that consistent with my swatching because I can't I can't figure out which one it is, which one I swatched twice. Which is um, so now I can't say that colors look same me because maybe it was those two. Those two look awfully. Those three actually look awfully close. So maybe I swatched one of those twice. That's that's probably it. Um, so what I did was I did um, a overall layer and then I sharpened the pencil and I did um, two layers and then one layer. Now one thing that's interesting about these is that they are not completely water resistant. Now these are sold as a um, an oil-based pencil and they are supposed to be uh, water, well generally you think of your water-based pencils as being water resistant but these are not. You can see they move very easily with water, which actually, when I use these, I use water and not odorless mineral spirits to blend them because they it works just as well. So I'll show you odorless mineral spirits here. I keep it in a little mason jar with some cotton balls in there to keep my brush from getting oversaturated and also so I can clean my brush on uh, if I need to. And I like to use a filbert brush. That's the type of brush I enjoy using. I feel like it's got a good amount of oomph to it. And so here with the odorless, odorless mineral spirits, we get pretty much the same the same effect. Now you may want to use odorless mineral spirits if you're worried your paper might warp, like maybe you have a, a thinner drawing paper or you're in a sketchbook and you're concerned that the water might buckle your paper. So the odorless mineral spirits shouldn't do that because it doesn't make your paper fiber swell, so that might be an advantage. But if you have a issue with solvents or maybe you want to give these to a child and you want them to have a little bit of blending ability, then the water will do just fine. This is not a, a watercolor pencil though. You're not going to get that sort of flow and movement that you would get with a traditional watercolor pencil. I was able to get uh, seven layers of color going with really light layers and then I started to have to burnish a little bit more when I got up to six and seven, but um, that's pretty good for a budget pencil, I think. Uh, generally, if a budget pencil has a lot of wax or a lot of oil in it, not a lot of pigment, it limits how much layering you can do because you clog the tooth with the, um, with the waxy, oily substance and you get a lot of bloom. I didn't notice any bloom, but I'm going to show you a coloring demo in a minute where uh, where you can see kind of like a waxy waxiness to it. But here is a color range swatched out. I generally don't swatch my pencils anymore, but I was really curious with this um, to see what sort of colors they chose for a 96 color set because that's an odd combination. Generally you have a 72. Oftentimes your pencils come out in like 12s, 24s, 48, 72, and then 120. 96 is kind of an odd um, combination, so I kind of wondered if they avoided a lot of samey colors, which I think they did for the most part. They're, um, 
those two yellows right there, which I think that's probably the one I swatched twice, that's one that stands out. Uh, some of the reds are similar, but, um, and some of the pinks are similar, but it's not too bad. If you like to do florals, I think you'll be appreciative of that. And I don't mind it if you have a couple really bright cherry reds that are similar because that, I tend to go through reds faster than anything because I just really like, I guess, um, drawing red objects uh, like fruits and things like that. And there's nothing like drawing a glossy cherry or strawberry with colored pencils. It's very satisfying. Um, you get a few grays. You get a white. The white is pretty weak, as in with most oil-based pencils and definitely with most budget pencils, the whites tend to be a little bit of a bummer. Um, and these are, it's a rarely firm lead. So your lead here, if you have arthritis, um, if you have any strength issues, I think these might be a little bit frustrating just because I felt like I had to put a lot of pressure when I wanted to do any burnishing or blending uh, if I wasn't layering them up. And you only layer so much before you, you know, you still need to burnish, I feel, to get rid of the tooth. Of course, you could also use some uh, some water or odorless mineral spirits, but these layers up here were, were pretty well burnished anyway. I had a, quite a bit of um, quite a bit of pressure once I got to layer seven to be able to add more pigment. So let's take a look at one of these. And I'm gonna use a darker color one because it's one of those pencils that has the silver printing and it's very very difficult to read when you're looking at um, when you're looking at a silver printing on a light color barrel. So this uh, this navy one should look a little bit be a little bit easier. So what it says here is a uh, Speer Farben and there's a little crown. And then it says excellent. And on the side, you've got the name Indigo and you've got the number 400. I didn't see really much correlation with what the numbers might. Um, might go to. I saw numbers in 300s and 600s. Um, uh, I don't know if they're picking from a very large white label type of um, type of product or not, but I, I didn't uh, I didn't see any sort of. I was comparing the numbers like the last two digits to my Cezanne pencils because I thought they looked very similar, and I wonder if there was some sort of correlation. But I couldn't find a correlation number wise. Uh, but even this like silver on the indigo, I still find it difficult to read the the. The printing is very like thick block letters, and this um, this serif font here I found very difficult to read. I couldn't read it in the lighter tones. So if I bring out like a um, like a white, actually the white's not too bad, although excellent spelled wrong. Is excellent spelled wrong on this one? Yep, excellent. Maybe that's German for excellent. I don't know. Anybody speak German? Can you tell me if excellent, e x z e l l e n t is um, excellent. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. So, uh, you know, typical American. I only speak one language. Um, so that's what those look like. I want to show you the artwork that I've done with these. So you may have seen this video here where I did the popsicles. This, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. The center popsicle I did with the Speer Farben pencils only. Although I did the stick with with a marker because I went in and did all the sticks before I realized, oh yeah, I want to keep these separate. So I used these on their own for the um, for the center popsicle, and I did some white paint pen highlights at the end. And there you can see here, because these pencils are not water resistant, the the liquid, the um, Posca white Posca pen that I used here actually leached up the color, and I actually had to let it dry. It was really bad, and I went over it a few times to try to get. A brighter white highlight but even I still had some color seepage some color um, staining coming up through so um, I want to point that out because if you like to use a white Posca pen maybe you like to spray your work with fixative you may have some issues where your colors migrate a bit um, or even if you know if you want it, I, I don't know anybody that varnishes their paintings, but yeah, you probably get a little bit of smearing there, so just be aware of that. So this one here was alcohol marker with a Spira Farben pencils on top. I really loved the way that looked, turned out really well. It was great for adding subtle shading to it. And this was Spira Farben um, pencils over watercolor, and I thought that worked really well too. So, um, you know, whatever you want to do. Like maybe you want to go over watercolor with the pencils, and you don't want to mess up the watercolor underneath, that would be a good opportunity to use the odorless mineral spirits because you could spread it around and it wouldn't lift up your watercolor. So that's just a, another reason why you might want to use odorless mineral spirits even though your pencils will move with regular water. So I have a video of this on my channel, my YouTube channel, if you want to check it out. I really enjoyed uh, working with these pencils on this paper. This is the um, the Hanamule Bamboo Mixed Media Paper. So I highly recommend this for mixed media work. It seems to work really well with markers, watercolors, and colored pencils. So um, definitely a definitely versatile paper. It's not the cheapest paper, but um, but it's good, and uh, and I do recommend it. 
So the next thing I'm going to show you here is um, a drawing that I did with a pencil that I was actually crafting with some friends, and I just brought my pencils because um, I didn't want to bring a bunch of craft supplies. I just wanted to have something small I could work on. And um, I found that they layered up pretty well. I could uh, blend and burnish pretty well. They're not very opaque, so I did run into some issues with highlights. I definitely had to save out or put in those lighter areas and kind of um, save that rather than trying to go in with a white pencil after. If you're gonna get this set, I would highly recommend picking up an opaque white pencil, either Prismacolor Premier or Derwent Drawing or Derwent Color Soft White, just a nice bright white pencils. I think the Holbein um, Soft White would probably be another good option, but, um, but yeah, I did, I did struggle with pulling highlights out, so I just had to make sure I reserved them. But I found they captured a really had a really nice point. They uh, were easy to use. This one here, I was drawing a moth that I had taken a photo of. So basically, um, I just kind of sketched it, and then I took a wet brush and just went over it and just kind of smeared the colors around a little bit. And here, I just did a rainbow gradient just to see. And this was mostly with a layering technique, so a little bit of burnishing, but mostly just layering just to see what sort of spectrum rainbow blending I could get. And it, it uh, worked really well. So um, it's definitely going to do a lot of the techniques that you would want your colored pencils to do. This is uh, on Bristol. It's uh, like, actually, this is either Bristol or hot press watercolor paper. It's a very smooth surface. And um, I what I did was I colored them, like I put the color down, then I added water, then I add, went over with another layer to build up color, and I got a satisfactory amount of color here, even on this really slick surface. Not super slick, but it's it's pretty smooth, like a smooth cardstock. Um, that worked pretty well for me. I thought I was going to run into an issue where I wasn't going to be able to build up the color, but once I added water and it kind of like picked up some of that wax, I guess, or oil, then I was able to go down with more color and get the vibrancy that I wanted. So this will probably... I, I stamped a couple of these, that last card I made with the stamp, so I decided to use that for um, for that little exercise there. Okay, the next thing we're gonna look at is blending spheres. So when I was using these, actually, one of the things that's kept me holding off on purchasing these pencils for so long is the fact that they look so much like my uh, Cezanne color pencils from Creative Mark. That's what this, uh, this set is here. So let's just compare a couple of the pencils because they're very similar. I wonder if I have one in this top layer. My phone is making so many noises. I apologize. Um, let's see. I'm trying to just find a similar color so I can grab like similar on each. These two look fairly close. Let me sharpen this guy. Okay. So looking at the Creative Mark. Suzanne and the um, and I just kind of grabbed it by eyeballing it. I didn't like go do any big research. Um, on one side, you've got the word Suzanne. You've got the color number, and on the and this is the Suzanne, the one with the gray, the silver, and and the one with the gold is a spare farben. This one has the nut, the color name, and then the number, and then you turn it, and then this is Creative Mark Artist Products on the Creative Mark, and it says spare farben, excellent on the um, Spare of Harbin. So I will just, I will just um, swatch these. So this is Suzanne. I'm gonna, I gotta switch that up a little bit. There we go. Unless, oh, I just knocked something down. I couldn't be too important, I don't think. <laughs> Hope not anyway. Oh, sorry about that. Oh my gosh, the camera's going nuts. I think I pushed a button on my camera. So this is the Suzanne. Just do a really light layer. Man, it's very difficult to, um, sometimes to evaluate these pencils. I like to go directly, you know, one to the other, one pencil to the other, and almost not even look, just kind of like try to apply the same amount of pressure, but kind of let my eyes go like um, blurry focus and kind of look off a little bit, um, just so I can kind of feel if it feels the same. I don't know if that makes any sense, but there's so many budget pencils out there, and I really only think there's probably about five <laughs> different kinds, you know? They feel the same, they lay down the same, um, and gosh, they look the same. If you look at the barrels right down to the, the, the color indexed end and the middle stripe, and then of course, different, different dipped, um, dipped ends, but boy, same size barrel, same size lead. I think these, I think the Cezanne and the Spare Farben pencils are the same. So, um, they're, they're pretty much roughly the same price. So I don't think there's much advantage of one over the other. Although I will say on the Suzanne 120, which is the size set I have, I don't have the 72, but on the 120 set, um, I feel like there are more samey colors and I feel like on the Spirit Farben, there aren't as many samey colors. So when I checked, 
uh, the Suzanne set was going for the 120 Suzanne set was going for uh, $66 and the 96 Schwer Farb Farben was going for like 46 I think. So, you know, it's going to, these prices are going to fluctuate. I would definitely just check whenever you are thinking about buying them. So I also compared this to the Polychromos and I was expecting the Polychromos to perform a lot better than it did. And as I was coloring with them side by side, I really didn't find the Polychromos to feel that similar. The Polychromos, the, the pencils, um, I, the Polychromos to me felt like the, it was a harder lead, but it was more pigmented and a little bit smoother. Like I didn't see as much grain using the same exact coloring techniques as I did in the Cezanne and the Spear Farben, which pretty much um, the colors broke down pretty much identically. So let's do a little bit of a um, blend it out with water here. So this is the Spear Farben. I'm just gonna wipe, wipe and dry my brush off. And here is the Cezanne. Also, we get that same movement. It almost feels like that might move a little bit more. Very similar from the Polychromos. No, not, I mean, there's a little bit of ghosting, but not much movement at all. The Polychromos is definitely much more um, water resistant, if that's important to you. So let's, again, let's go over here to my blending spheres. Whoops, I got a lot of water on there. This really isn't affecting the sphere too much and the paint the water is definitely just kind of sitting can you see that just kind of sitting on the top there i'm just going to blot it off and see if it yeah it's like i'm blotting it off it's not really taking it takes off a little bit if i rub it but um you know not too bad i get a fresh spot of my rag here and do that to the cezanne which I feel like it is manipulating the pigment a little bit. It's uh, it's still sitting on top of the pigment for the most part, but I do feel like I'm getting a little bit of smoothing out of the color, which is actually quite quite nice, because I thought it was kind of like, um, when I start to get a lot of layers on this, I feel like it's getting kind of gummy. And I didn't feel the gumminess on the polychromos, but I also didn't get the smoothness that I was hoping to get either. Yeah, and the water is kind of seeping into the paper even. Um, so if I just, if I just stamp it down, I'll get color, a little bit of color, but if I turn it like in rub, I definitely get more color on Suzanne. And let's try the Spear Farben, which I believe are uh, the same as the Suzanne, which is fine by me. I like the Suzanne pencils, but you know, I certain, and, and actually, I mean, some of my Suzannes have gotten kind of short, so yeah, that's all right. I don't, I don't mind having more of those, um, but, I have a lot of pencils, and if I knew they were the same, I probably would, I wouldn't have bought them. Well, I I, I had an assumption that they were the same. I had a hunch that they might be, but I also had a, I was really curious, and um, since there were requests for it, I knew it would be an interesting video for some. Well, let's just yep, yeah, that picks it up too. So um, I find I find them to be very comparable. Uh, so I guess it would just depend on whether you want the 120 colors or if you want the 96 colors and how much you want to spend. So my verdict on these are, you know, I wouldn't say they're just like Polychromos, um, but I would say they're a decent pencil. I would say they're a little bit on the firm side. Why does that keep wanting to autofocus? I'm just going to zoom out a little bit more. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm sorry about that. I don't know why it's doing that. It's frustrating. Um, uh, this one here is a Spear Farben. Suzanne. Suzanne might have been a little bit tougher to lift there. This is Polychromos. Not much lifting. And it has a lot more pigment on it, so, you know, it just depends on what you want. Now, I probably would say, if you're if you're considering these because you're like, I really want a set of Polychromos, um, if you know you really want a set of Polychromos, like you've tried them, you've maybe borrowed friends, you bought a few open stock, and you know you like them, you're probably better off to buy a um, either some open stock. Now this is polychromo. This is polychromos, and that's moving quite a bit too. Hmm. So you know, I would probably say you know unless because I you have to buy a set of these, right? So you have to spend you know at least thirty to forty dollars. So for thirty to forty dollars, you can get a set of probably a set of twenty four of the Faber Castells, and 
you know, add a pencil here and there as you feel like you need that gap. Because because the layering on like a polychromos or another high-end pencil is greater, like you can you can get more layers, you can um, mix your colors a little bit more, you have more versatility in fewer pencils than you would with the, like if you had 12 Faber-Castell polychromos versus 12 any budget pencil, you're gonna have a more versatility with those Faber-Castells because you can layer them up more, which means you can mix them more, you can make a greater variety of colors, and it's gonna help your um, understanding of color theory. So um, for, for that, for that um, reason, I'd probably say that it would be better just to get, if you if you know you want X brand, um, but they're kind of out of your budget, so you're considering a budget brand, then I would say just get the one you want, the biggest set that you can that you can afford, or get some open stock pencils. But if you're not sure if color pencils are for you, or you want a big variety of color for working in an adult coloring book, or maybe doing some rubber stamping, um, and you know you just you want to have that variety of color. Like if you're rubber stamping, you probably would rather have a big variety of color because it's not like you have a lot of room to go blending when you're in like I don't even know what I did with my samples. You don't have a ton of, of room to go in blending when you're when you're working in those small spaces. So every you know everybody's situation is different. I just want to help you get the products that are going to work best for you. And um, the the here are some swatches of the pencils. I think these are most similar to. So here is the Suzanne. And what I do. What did I just do with my swatch? Are you kidding me? Where's my swatch from the <laughs> Spirit of Water Kittens? <laughs> Here it is. Oh, guys. Okay. Um, so I found the Schwerer Par Farbens to be closest to the Suzanne, which are a budget brand that I really do like. You can find them on Amazon. Uh, you can also find them on Jerry's Autorama. I believe Jerry sells them on Amazon. So they are a house brand of them. I found the color selection to be very similar and the working properties to be very similar, saturation, all that. Other pencils I found to be similar would be the Art and Fly pencils. The um, Star, Joy, Star Joy Delis were quite similar, although I do think the Schreer Farben were a little more pigmented, and I thought the lay down was a little bit nicer. They're also kind of similar to the Magic Fly and Castle Art, although those barrels are a little bit skinnier, so you might have a, um, and it's not a huge difference, but they are, the, they are a little bit skinnier than the, um, than the Spirit Farbens, so, you know, take it for what it's worth. The Castle Arts I find to be a little bit more expensive though, and I and I think for, I, I do think that the Cezanne and the Spirit Farbens are better quality, so just kind of keep that, you know, in mind when you're considering these different brands. And here's a Polychromos, which, to be honest, I didn't seem to think they were all that similar. The Starjoy Jelly Deli is another one that gets um, compared to Polychromos, but I honestly, this these almost feel a little more waxy, and they're definitely not as pigmented. They're not bad. They're definitely not bad. But um, but yeah, I mean, you've got choices for sure. We've got lots of choices in the budget pencil realm these days. Oh, you know what? One thing I didn't, I I don't know if you noticed before I added water. See how it has a nice matte finish to it now that I've added water on those pencils? They do kind of, you almost see like the, the pencil strokes. Almost, they almost look like brush strokes. You see this kind of like thick uh, shininess to them. Uh, that's something I did notice and I've noticed in a lot of different pencils, but like if I, I don't know if you can see that, if I kind of catch it to the light, I don't know if the camera will deal very well with that, but you almost see like just a little shiny, little shiny uh, pencil strokes there. It's just the build up, the buildup of the waxes that you're seeing there versus on a polychromos where you don't see those buildup of shiny strokes so much. It's just a, it's just the, ra the ratio of binder to pigment and uh, polychromos seems to have a higher it, oddly, it's got a higher pigment to binder ratio, but the colors don't bleed, which I would think that if you didn't have enough binder, that's that's what would make your colors bleed. So I'm not exactly sure why these budget pencils tend to blend out with water a lot more than your higher end counterparts, but they do. And it's just something to keep in mind and uh, just be aware of it if you've got budget pencils at home. I like these pencils. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, if you have these other brands, though, I think I would probably say use what you have and um, consider putting money in the kitty for a better quality product in the future because you'll know what you like. The, the, the wonderful thing, though, I will say, because I am a big fan of using what you have and buying what you can afford and actually using what you buy and not letting anything be too precious, is that say you get a big set of pencils and you're using them and you're like, oh, I'm using up red, I'm using up white, I'm using up teal, and you see all those colors you're actually using, swatch them out, take that swatch to the art supply store and say, okay, I want to match these colors in Prismacolor, maybe I want a softer pencil. Like, these are these are fairly hard. These are the Suzanne's, same as the um, 
the Spare Farbens, they're a firmer pencil. I prefer a softer pencil. That's another thing why these, are, even though these are wonderful pencils, they color great, they're well pigmented for a budget pencil. Um, they're a firm pencil. I prefer a softer lead. I don't have arthritis or any sort of issues that would um, cause me strain over time using a harder lead pencil. It's just my preference. I do love the Pro Colors by Derwent, but I'm going to be using those on a sanded paper. I'm going to be using those for specific projects. Um, but in general, I'm going to go for I'm going to go for my Derwent Light Fast. They're softer. I'm going to go for my um, my Derwent Color Soft. I'm going to go for my Prism Color because that's a personal preference. And that's another thing you definitely want to consider the bias of the person reviewing the product. Like me, I like soft pencils. Uh, somebody might rave and sing about these from the rooftops because they like a firmer pencil. And I think that's why they get their comparison to polychromo so much is because they're a firmer pencil, but they don't have quite the pigment load. Um, they're different. They're very good. They're very good, especially for the price. But, um, my verdict would be if you know, if you know, if you're like, I really want these pencils, but I'll just settle for these. Generally, you're going to end up buying the more expensive pencils anyway. And, um, I would say you're probably better off, you know? Um, unless you just want to put a lot of pencil miles, you know, under your belt before you go and invest in the more expensive pencils. Like if you're afraid to sharpen your expensive pencils, then yeah, get a pair, get a set of these budget, you know, pencils. They will do you just fine. But then when you want to start making art to hang on the wall, the, you know, you're getting ready to graduate from the sketchbook and you want to maybe sell your work or hang it on the wall and not worry about it fading, then, you know, go to the, uh, you know, Derwent Light Fast or Polychromos or, or something like that. That's my opinion. Not that you asked for it, but, um, <laughs> At the end of this review of Shreer Farb and Pencil, I say, yeah, they're they're good. I think they're good value. Um, but they're the same as Suzanne, so if you already have those, I, uh, I can't say that. I think they're the same as Suzanne. To me, they feel the same as Suzanne. They look very similar to Suzanne. And, um, and I like both brands just fine. So there you have it. I hope this was helpful. Sometimes I feel like I just ramble for 20 minutes or 30 minutes when I'm doing a review, but uh, I did want to put these through their paces and uh, figure out what I think they would be best for. Oh, definitely lighter papers on this. I would recommend these on light papers, not on dark papers because they are so translucent. So if you're a stamper, you're always working on light papers, they're they're actually going to be a really great choice for you when you might not notice the, the um, quality improvement of a polychromos. If you're working on light paper all the time, I think that, that this would be a situation where, yeah, get these because you're not going to notice a difference for like stamping and coloring on smooth paper. It just depends on what you're what you're wanting to do and uh, and what you like doing. But they're good. They're um, definitely good for a budget pencil. And there you have it. <laughs> I hope it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy these reviews, please give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends uh, and all that jazz. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> all the things. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.